My name is Linda, and I live a double life. In the morning, I am a successful executive, a confident woman leading the morning briefing at the company. In the evening, I am a caring wife and mother. My morning begins with a familiar routine. I stop at the coffee shop on the corner where the barista already knows my order, a double espresso and a fresh croissant. This is my ritual before the workday in the conference room on the fifth floor of our office. Key employees have gathered. I look at their faces and feel the power that my position gives me. Today, we are discussing a new project that can take our company to the next level. I confidently lead the presentation, explaining strategies and plans. Everyone looks at me with admiration and respect, I know that they rely on me. After the briefing is over, I return to my office. My assistant brings me documents to sign. I inhale the aroma of freshly brewed coffee and immerse myself in work. Every day at the office is a game for me, or I have to be on top, showing my strength and leadership skills. I come home differently. Here, I am a caring mother and wife. My husband, John, and our son, Ben, need me to be completely different. I cook dinner, help Ben with his homework, and talk to John about his day. He is an engineer, and his job is often difficult and tiring. I listen to his stories, support him, and try to be the perfect wife. One Monday evening, I found myself at a company gathering. That was the evening I met him, Jake, young and energetic, with a charming smile. He had just joined our company and clearly wanted to impress. We started talking, and I felt his energy and enthusiasm drawing me in. It was the beginning, and I had no idea where it would lead. A few weeks had passed since the evening when I first met Jake. Our paths crossed constantly at work, meetings on common projects, during coffee breaks. Jake was not only attractive but also incredibly smart and ambitious. His ideas were fresh, his approach was unconventional, and I couldn't help but admire him. We began to spend more time together. Jake often stayed late at the office, as did I. In the evening, when most of the employees had already gone home, we stayed, discussing work issues and just talking. I noticed how attentively he listened to my every word, caught every detail. It was pleasant and exciting. One evening, when we were again late at the office, Jake suggested that we go for a walk. I agreed. We went outside, and the cool breeze refreshed our thoughts. We walked along the embankment, enjoying the view of the city lights. Jake began to talk about himself, his dreams, and ambitions. He wanted to change the world, and his passion for this was infectious. I felt something more than just a work relationship growing between us. A few days later, we were staying late at the office again. Work on a new project required our attention. When everyone left, Jake suggested having a glass of wine in my office. It was a spontaneous offer, and I agreed. We were sitting at my desk, discussing the project, laughing. Suddenly, I realized that his presence had become something special for me. After a couple of glasses, I felt a strong attraction to him, and I couldn't help but kiss him. At that moment, I felt very strange, but I still wanted to stay in this moment longer. I didn't continue to develop the events, Jake was also understanding and did not insist on continuing. That evening was the beginning of our romance. We began to meet secretly after work. I felt alive again, full of energy and passion. Jake turned out to be not only a wonderful conversationalist but also a caring, attentive partner. Each of our meetings was filled with sincere emotions and feelings. After several such meetings, this happened, we met and chatted as usual, but that evening, I was very tired. At work, there was such a pile of that I did not know if I would survive until the evening. Jake saw that I was feeling bad and offered to give me a massage so that I could relax and take my mind off these problems at work. I felt so good, I really felt that I was getting better. His hands touched me, and I felt very warm from each of his touches. I realized that I could not stand it anymore, and after he got close enough, I kissed him again. This time we both understood that we would not stop. He lay down right next to me, we kissed for a long time, we took off our clothes, and finally felt each other's real warmth. After a couple of minutes, we could no longer resist, he grabbed my hair, and it happened. I was incredibly happy. The night with him was like a contrast shower after a hot day, it was filled with adrenaline and pleasure. 
I didn't know if I could stop. My stays home were getting later and later. I justified it with work, and John seemed to trust me. He always trusted me, and I used that trust to hide my affair. I know I was playing with fire, but I couldn't stop. Jake became my inspiration, my secret pleasure. One night when I got home, John was waiting for me in the kitchen. He was worried, but he didn't say anything suspicious. I hugged him, telling him that the project was taking a lot of time and effort. He kissed my forehead and said goodnight. I looked at him, feeling a mixture of guilt and fear, but I couldn't stop. Jake was my secret one I didn't want to share with anyone. My relationship with Jake became more and more intense. We spent every three minutes together, and work on the project became just a cover for our meetings. Deep down, I knew that this could not continue forever, but passion clouded my thoughts. I felt at the peak of emotions, but at the same time, deep down, I realized that something inevitable was approaching. At one of the meetings, I received an important assignment, a new project that required complete confidentiality. This project could become key to our company, and its success depended on classified information. I understood all the responsibility, but I felt that I could handle it. Jake showed an unusual interest in the project. He often asked questions, tried to find out details. Although I tried to keep everything under control, his persistence began to alarm me. I began to doubt his intentions, but every time he looked at me with his eyes full of admiration and love, my suspicions disappeared. One evening, we were alone in the office as usual. Jake approached me and started asking me questions about the project. I decided to share some information with him to test his reaction. He seemed interested and grateful, but there was something strange in his eyes that I couldn't immediately recognize. The next day, I noticed that Jake was becoming more and more insistent. He was asking about details of the project that were strictly confidential. I began to feel that he knew too much and wanted to know too much. Anxiety was growing inside me, but I couldn't imagine that someone who gave me so much happiness could betray me. One night, when I returned home late again, John was already asleep. I quietly entered the bedroom, feeling the tension in the air. The next morning, I discovered that Jake had not shown up for work. No one knew where he was, and his phone was switched off. This caused me to panic. I tried to contact him, but to no avail. His disappearance left me confused and anxious. Rumors began to circulate around the office that Jake might be a spy planted by competitors. I didn't want to believe it, but the facts spoke for themselves. I felt betrayed and deceived, everything we shared felt like a lie. I knew I'd been manipulated, but I didn't yet know how deep the consequences were. Jake's disappearance left me confused and afraid. Rumors began to circulate around the office that he had been planted by competitors, which scared me even more. I tried to gather information about his past, but all the leads led nowhere. He was like a ghost that appeared in my life and suddenly disappeared. I lived in a state of anxiety every day, expecting the worst. The project I was working on came under close scrutiny. We discovered a leak of confidential information, which put our company at risk. All suspicions fell on me since I was the one associated with the project and had access to classified data. I was called into a meeting with senior management. The atmosphere in the office was tense. My colleagues, with whom I had worked side by side for many years, looked at me with distrust. I felt like the ground was slipping from under my feet. The management demanded an explanation, and I did not know what to say. Jake had deceived me, and now I was in danger of losing everything I had built over the years. I came home after that horrible day, feeling devastated. John was waiting for me in the kitchen. He looked at me with his tired eyes and asked what had happened. I told him everything, about the affair with Jake, about the suspicions, about his disappearance. I expected John to be furious, but instead, he surprised me with his calm. I knew, Linda, he said quietly. I knew everything from the beginning. I looked at him, not understanding. He continued, I suspected that you were seeing someone, so I hired a private investigator. When it became clear that it was Jake, I began checking his background. It turned out that he was working for our competitors. I allowed this to continue in order to gather evidence against him and against the competitors. 
I was shocked. John knew everything and used me for his own purposes. I felt betrayed twice, first by Jake, and now by my husband. Why didn't you tell me? I asked, trying not to cry. I wanted to protect you and the company. If I had intervened earlier, we could have lost all the evidence. Now we have everything we need to expose them and save the company, John replied. I sat in silence, processing his words. My husband had manipulated me, but his intentions were aimed at protecting our family and business. I didn't know what to think. Feelings of hurt, betrayal, and gratitude were all mixed up. Now I had a choice, support John and expose the competitors together, or leave him and start over. It was a difficult decision, and I knew my life would never be the same. A week had passed since our conversation with John. We still could not come to terms with the fact that my husband knew about everything and used it for his own purposes. However, I did not have time to think, we had to act quickly to save the company and our family. John and I began to plan our actions. He showed me all the evidence he had collected against Jake and the competitors. I was amazed at how carefully everything had been planned. John used the information I had provided to Jake to set a trap for our competitors. We agreed to meet with the company's management and present them with all the evidence. I felt nervous and excited at the same time. This moment was key for our company and for me personally. On the appointed day, we entered the conference room, where the board of directors had already gathered. I looked at their faces and felt their distrust and tension. John began his presentation, detailing the investigation and how Jake had been planted by our competitors. We discovered that Jake had been using his relationship with Linda to gain access to confidential information, John said, showing documents and conversation records. He was passing this information on to our competitors to undermine our project. I watched the board members' reactions. Some looked shocked, others angry, but most importantly, I saw that they were starting to trust us. Thanks to Linda, John continued, we were able to gather enough evidence to hold our competitors accountable and prevent further information leaks. It was incredible. My husband, despite all our problems, used my mistakes to save the company. When the presentation was over, I felt relieved. The management thanked us for our efforts and promised to take all necessary measures. However, it didn't end there. That evening, when we returned home, John admitted that this was only the beginning. Now that the competitors had been exposed, we had to deal with the company's internal problems and restore its reputation. Linda, I know it wasn't easy for you, he said, but together we can overcome everything. I believe in us. I looked at him, feeling a mixture of gratitude and doubt. We had been through a lot, and now we had a chance to start all over again. New challenges awaited us, but I knew that I would no longer be alone in this. After exposing our competitors and the trader Jake, the situation in the company began to stabilize, but this was only the beginning. We had to not only restore our reputation but also restore trust within the team. My role in this was key, and I understood that this was my chance to atone for my mistakes. First of all, I decided to talk to my colleagues, to explain my position and show them that I was ready to work for the good of the company. I organized a meeting at which I frankly told them what had happened, how Jake deceived me, and how John and I were able to expose him. My colleagues listened attentively, and I saw in their eyes not only distrust but also hope. We have all made mistakes, I said in conclusion, but now we have an opportunity to correct them and move forward. I am ready to do everything possible to regain your trust and reach new heights together with you. I began to work even harder, helping colleagues, offering new ideas, and taking part in all important projects. Gradually, the tension began to subside, and I felt that our relationship was starting to improve. However, in our personal life, everything was much more complicated. John and I tried to improve our relationship, but the shadow of betrayal hung over us. One evening, after another session with a psychologist, we were sitting in our garden, enjoying the warm summer evening. John took my hand and looked into my eyes. Linda, I want you to know that despite everything, I love you, he said. I felt tears welling up in my eyes. I love you too, John, and I am ready to fight for our family, I answered. I love you very much, but I can't just forget everything. I can't forget what you did, John said. 
I understand that I did the wrong thing to you, but at the same time, I can't just pretend that nothing happened, John said. I couldn't believe these words, but at the same time, I understood. After this conversation, we broke up. I continued to live my life, but my thoughts always returned and thought over the whole situation, often asking myself the question, can I get John back?